Wonderful singing tonight. That's a beautiful song, Dennis, at the very end there. It's one of my favorites. I hope that's a favorite of yours as well. Turn your Bibles this evening to Joshua. It'll be in the book of Joshua, chapter 6. Uh, picking back up in our series. And I do hope you've been blessed this month uh, by our missionaries that we've had in so far. And then even next week as well. Not only just to uh, see the burden that they may have, but then as we've been teaching and preaching that also then that we would share in that burden with them as they are, are called to go out into the far places, if you will, of uh, those ends of the earth that we may not be able to go and reach uh, we also then ought to have a burden for where we live, with our family, with our friends and our community, and then those that we can associate with and share the gospel with as well. But Joshua chapter 6 tonight, I want to just begin by reading the first two verses. It says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given it unto the... Unto I have given it into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Tonight I want to talk to you about overcoming great obstacles. Overcoming great obstacles. As we just look at this task, this, we would say what a feat this is. Here Israel is now, God's people with uh, the leading of Joshua. Uh, they've crossed that Jordan. Now their first task is to go and take this great city. And what a task that must have been. You know, they looked at this and understanding this wasn't going to be an easy thing, but then believing that God would be in this. Their first objective is to take Jericho. That city may at first glance, even to them, look unsurmountable. And we could then, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on this evening, we may have those obstacles in our life where they may seem unsurmountable. They may seem, we, we, we even look at the circumstances and say, Lord, can we really overcome this? And yet, I believe with God's help, and I would hope you believe it as well, that all things are possible. If God is in it, if God is directing, if God is leading, as we even see this obstacle uh, of Jericho to Israel may seem unsurmountable as we have obstacles in our life that may come that may seem unsurmountable, yet knowing with God we can do all things with God's help, all things are possible. Now, just to give you a little bit of background here, a little bit of an understanding, and some of you may know this as well, but the Israelites were camped just outside the city of Jericho. We can read that here. We've read it even up to now. And this was an important city, really strategically, because by taking Jericho, really it would give the Israelites just an advantage then to effectively divide really the nation in half. So what they could do from Jericho is they could then really fight a northern campaign and a southern campaign moving forward as God directs them to take the land that God has promised them. One author put it this way, and really as he just speaks to these first two verses, the scriptures here where the people of Jericho knew the Israelites were coming. They knew really what their fate was. He goes on to say, we are told that Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went in or no one went out and no one came in. We read that there in verse one. They were, if you will, terrified that Israel was coming. We've read that even before as we've worked up to chapter six. The inhabitants of the land prepared for battle. Jericho occupied an area really around 10 acres or so. That's what they were guarding. The city was encircled by a wall, most believe even to be a double wall. That wall was anywhere from 
12 to 45 feet high in places, possibly around 40 feet, 40 feet thick. And that was really, we would say, then that's as we read that illustration of Rahab, where her house was even then built into the wall. This was a great task. Yet, as I said a moment ago, with God's help, anything is possible. Now, how can, how can this be? Right? We, we use that phrase, we, we talk about that with God, all things are possible. We talk about if God is in it, then we can overcome. And, and, and how really does that then develop in our life? Right? Instead of it just being a catchphrase, what can we learn from this chapter that will really help us understand that thought? That we can overcome great obstacles. And the first, I believe is God's plans are always right. Amen. God's plans are always right. Now, I do want to take time tonight, and I want to begin to read now, starting in verse 3, and we won't read this entire chapter, but by the time we're done this evening, we will read most of it. But I want to begin reading in verse 3, and what I want you to do as I read, obviously follow along, but then I want you to get a sense of really the task at hand, and I then want you to get a sense of God's plan. And then we're going to talk about that as I read, really look at what's going on here and what God is asking of Joshua and then therefore his people as well. So in verse 3, we'll begin and it says, And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days." So you can even just picture that right now. They were to go around the city once for six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark of the trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a strong blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall flat, or shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. Now look at verse 7 as we continue reading. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city and let him that is armed pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn passed on before the Lord and, and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the arm went but before the priest that blew with the trumpets, and the reward came after the ark, or, or the reward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. Now verse 10, and Joshua had commanded the people saying, ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout, then shall ye shout. Now just picture that just for a moment. So for six days, they're to march around the city once. And Joshua says, you're not allowed to speak. You're not allowed to shout. You're not allowed to make a noise until I give you that command to do it. Verse 11, so the ark of the Lord come past the city uh, going about at once and they came unto the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning and the priest took up the ark of the Lord and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them. But the, but the rear ward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. Now just three more verses here this evening, verse 14. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned unto the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day. 
and could pass the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day, they can pass the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Now, I began by saying God's plans are always right. Now, we would look at this, and, and I will speak of this in just a moment, but we would say this probably isn't a familiar battle plan. Really, most would say there's around five battle plans that many would follow at this time, during biblical times, if you will, to attack a walled city. Now, that's important, being that it's a walled city. So first attack would be they would choose to go over the wall with ladders. I mean, you've seen this on TV shows and history channels and movies and all of these things where there's a battle of a walled city and they gather all of their men and their ladders and as they're taking upon themselves arrows and stones and all kinds of rocks and boulders, they do their best to get as many men to the top of the wall as they can with the ladders. Another strategy would be to dig a tunnel under the wall. I mean, it seems logical, right? Hey, we're outside the city. These people are scared to death. Jericho's scared of us. We have all the time in the world. Let's just send Dennis out there with a shovel. He can start digging. We'll get there eventually. Well, if Dennis is doing it, it's going to be eventually, all right? But we'll get there eventually. They didn't do that. They didn't stick to a normal strategy. They could have smashed a hole in the wall with the battering ram, right? You've seen that uh, done before. They get that great big really tree, you know, and they kind of put a spike. They carve a spike on the end of it and just dozens of men grab that ram or that battering ram and they begin to beat and beat until finally there's a big enough opening to where soldiers can rush in. They didn't do that. They could have put a siege on the city and just starved them out. Bear in mind, no one was coming out. No one was going in. So logically, you'd say, hey, that's the easy thing to do, right? Hey, guys, let's just light a fire and we'll sit around the campfire and we'll just starve these folks out. There's going to come a time where that will be done. We, we actually have seen many of these strategies played out in other places of the Bible. The last strategy really could have then been deception. You know, we, we talk about the Trojan horse and or maybe they could have tried to sneak some spies in to a level where they could then have infiltrated and let others men in. But out of these five attacks that most would say are logical, most would say are just pick one and you'll probably be able to overcome Jericho. What was the Lord's plan of attack? It was very different, wasn't it? Fact is, really, it wasn't reliant on the strength of men at all. The Lord's plan of attack, maybe even, we can't help but wonder what the people of Jericho were thinking. Right here, you have the uh, Israel and their army, and what are they doing? They're marching around the city once a day. They're not attacking. They're not even screaming and yelling. They're not saying, hey, we're going to get you. We're coming for you. They just simply march around that city. Now, the Israelites may have had a certain thought too as to say, Joshua, what are we doing? Joshua, you are a military expert. You know how to take this city. You know we can do it. Why are we doing it this way? And yet, as I started tonight, God's plans are always right. Isn't it awful that sometimes this is what we begin to do? We begin to try to reason and wonder why God does it God's way. And to be honest tonight, why do you care? 
Why do I care? If it's God's way, we should ultimately just say, Lord, this is exactly what you have. And I know then I want to be obedient to you. It shouldn't matter what the Lord then tells us or how he tells us to do something. Now, what is the purpose of this kind of battle plan? Why did God choose to send Israel in this way? He could have done all a a myriad of other attacks. Why did he do this? And I just alluded to it a moment ago, I believe so that you and I today, others, as we read the scriptures, would see that victory comes from God and God alone. And not, hear me now, and not by the wisdom and by the strength of man. You see, Israel could have very well knocked the wall down. They could have very well infiltrated the city with ladders. They could have very well dug a trench and got in. They could have very well sent spies in to overtake from within. But then they would have received the victory and not God. And God said, no, no, I have a very specific plan of attack for you. Remember, God just saw them, got them across the Jordan. Now God is showing to them that if they will obey him, if they will do things his way, that they will truly see a victory. We're going to then see that here next week as we go to chapter 7 with the sin of Achan. We're then going to even see how they didn't consult God the way they should have for the next attack as well. One author put it this way, God's ways are not our ways. Now think about this tonight. God told Noah to build an ark. He told Abraham to sacrifice his son. He put Joseph into a position of influence really by giving him dreams. By, by allowing him to then interpret dreams. During the time of the judges, God told Gideon he needed a smaller army, not a bigger one. He defeated the Philistines using a young boy with a slingshot. He chose the church's chief antagonist, which we know to be Paul, to be its chief theologian. This is the same God who chose to take the form of man to give his life for sinful mankind. You see, God's ways are not our ways. We can reason, we can try to work through the equation, we can try to figure it out all that we can. God's ways are always best. And really, there's going to be times in this life where we face similar walls of opposition, if you will, where we have similar battles. And we see over and over in Scripture again that God's strategies, sometimes we would look at as we do this battle and say, God, are you sure this is the way you would have us behave? God, are you sure this is the way you would have us live our life. And I want to give you some of those as we could see these in scripture. But you know, the scripture teaches that we are to love those that hate us. You say, Lord, how in the world? Lord, but these people hate me. These people revile me. These people are against me. And God, your instruction is for me to love them. Absolutely. We ought to. Just like the Israel, just like Joshua may have said, Lord, are you sure this is the right battle plan? God said, absolutely. I'm in control. You obey me. The Bible teaches us to forgive those who have wronged us. Boy, sometimes we have a different motive, don't we? Sometimes we think, man, if if someone has wronged us, we can just hold on to that forever. We can, we can even get to the point where we become so bitter, we become so spiteful that we will then wish wrong upon them. And the Bible says, no, no. Love those that hate you. Forgive those that have wronged you. Our world today, we see biblical teaching where we are to save intimacy for marriage. The world looks at that and they laugh. They say, are you kidding me? You're you're going to live with someone your whole life and the world teaches this and you're not going to be intimate before you're married first? 
That's how the world perceives that. And God says, we need to stay pure. God says we need to challenge ourselves to be pure for that mate he has for us. The Bible tells us not to seek revenge, to leave justice into the hands of a holy God. The Bible teaches us that we're to give a tenth of our tithe of our income to the Lord. The world looks at that and says, what in the world? Why would I give a tenth of my income? And by the way, that's just our tithe. That doesn't include the biblical principle of our offerings and when the spirit moves in our heart. But see, God's ways are always right. The word of God teaches us that we are to trust God rather than our own schemes, rather than our own wisdom. We are to trust him to provide for every one of our needs. And we, at times, we will fight so hard to try to figure it out for ourselves, to try to just make sure the equation lines up just right, and we will worry, and we will fret, and we will just have anxiety, and all kinds of things in the Bible just tear, clearly teaches, just trust God. His ways are right. The Bible also teaches something that many may find to be just hard to do, which is to rejoice in every circumstance. We look at that and say, Lord, how in the world can I rejoice in this? You don't understand how hard this is, what I'm going through. And God says, no, I know absolutely what you're going through. God says, there's a purpose for it. I'm molding you. I'm fashioning you into the image of my son, Jesus Christ. And he says, in all things rejoice. You see, so God's ways aren't our ways. Yet we often try to do it our way, don't we? We often still think sometimes, and I don't even think often it's, it's a conscious decision that we're trying to say we know more than God or we know better than God. But when we stray away from the biblical model of doing things the right way, that's exactly what we're saying. We're saying, no, no, Lord, I have a better way. No, no, I, I think I can achieve this in my own strength. Walking around the city may have seemed ridiculous, may have seemed so out of touch with the military strategy, yet God knows exactly what he's doing. And God is always, always will bless when we are willing to obey his plan. We just have to obey. Remember, keep in mind to this as we just refresh our memory for a moment. God already promised that they would have the victory. He's already told Joshua. He's already told Israel that you will defeat Jericho if you do it my way. You will defeat everyone if you do it my way. He's already given them the outcome. Does that sound familiar tonight for you and I? In our life today, we've already won the battle. We know what the outcome will be. We know what eternity is ahead for the believer. We know that this life is not our home. We're just a passing through, if you will. We understand that as a believer, as a child of God, we can face trials. We can go through difficulties. And God is with us each and every step of the way. And he tells us time and time again in scripture that we will reign and rejoice with him for all of eternity. And yet how often in this life do we still go at times, well, Lord, I think maybe I have a better way. Lord, I think maybe I have a better solution. Lord, I think maybe I have a little better strategy. And God says, no, you don't. Be obedient to his plan, which leads us really to our next thought where then we should always, always obey God's plan. There should never be a doubt in our mind. We should never hesitate to obey. 
Those of you that are parents, those of you that are grandparents, you've given your child, you've given your grandchild a, a whatever you want to call it, a order or a uh, task to do. And there, I'm certain, has been a time where you did that and you saw hesitation. You said, go clean your room right now. And they, what? took 45 minutes to take 12 steps to get to their bedroom or whatever. My son hasn't done that. He's a perfect angel, by the way. <laughs> so just so you know, okay? Takes after his, takes after his father. <laughs> God says, obey immediately. Obey now. Our obedience, and I want you to get this tonight. Our obedience is a way for us to worship God. It's a way for us to love him. It's a way for us to deepen our relationship with him. Obedience shouldn't be a strain. Obedience shouldn't be painful like we see in our children sometimes, like we see in just menial menial tasks that we ask them to do. When God instructs us, whether big or small, it doesn't matter whether it seems logical or not, we should always obey because we want to worship him. We want to love him. We should never look for ways around obeying God. Joshua could have done that very thing. Israel, as we said a moment ago, could have done that very thing. They could have had a meeting. Joshua could have went and said, listen, this is how we're going to attack this city. We're going to go in. We're going to build some ladders. We're going to get some battering rams. We're going to do all kinds of things. We're going to even dig a trench. We're going to do everything we can to infiltrate the city. They're scared of us. They're not coming out. No one can go in. Maybe we'll even starve them for a bit, make sure they're nice and weak, and then we'll do all these things, and certainly this battle will be ours. But Joshua chose to obey. Joshua chose to obey God's plan because he understood God's plans are always right. They could have just flat out said no. No, Lord, I'm not going to do it that way. Sadly, I think sometimes we do that very thing. Sadly, I think sometimes, as I said, we flat out just say no. God impresses upon our heart to do something, whether it's to go and tell someone the gospel, whether it's maybe just to go and encourage one, maybe it's to go and be part of the ministry in our church, maybe it's just to, to, to work on an area in our life that we're failing in and God has revealed it through his spirit and says, listen, you need to work on this and there are times we can just fold our arms, we can say, no, I'm not ready to do that right now. And when we do that, we will fail every time. Joshua could have said no. Joshua could have said, Lord, do you know what kind of a leader this is going to make me look like? Think about that just for a moment. God, what are you asking of me? This is how you want me to go take the city? You want us to walk around it and blow some trumpets and then finally on that last day, then we're going to shout and the walls are going to come down? Lord, I'm Joshua. You've equipped me for battle. You've trained me through Moses. You've, You've trained me in all of these ways and this is what you expect me to do? God, this could hurt my reputation. Joshua didn't do that. He was willing to obey. We would be so much more effective if we would always obey the Lord and not look for ways around what he's commanded. Sadly, we have a world full of people. I believe even there is a lot of Christian people who just for some reason read this book And they try to find ways around it. They know it's true. They know it's right. They know it's God's word. And yet they just reason in themselves ways and reasons why they don't have to obey. Folks, we ought not to be that kind of people. 
We ought to be an individual who is always looking to do right. Even as a church, as I lead this church, as you are part of Community Baptist Church, one of our spirits of unity should be that very thing, that as a church, we are always going to choose to obey God and do what's right. Although we may have a different plan that we think would work better, although maybe there are times where we don't understand all that God has, but we're going to rest in him knowing that his plan is perfect and his plan should always be obeyed. To that point, look at verse 17. I want to read those scriptures. And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein, uh, that therein to the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are in her and in her house, because she hid the messengers that were sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all of the silver and of the gold and vessels and brass of iron are consecrated unto the Lord, uh, they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. We'll look at that next week. But even there, God not only gives a plan of how to attack the battle or how to attack the city, God then gives a plan of what they need to do when they get in there. He gives a plan of how they then should obey, expecting that they will obey his plan. And then lastly tonight, as we close with this thought, really out of verses 26 and 27, our victories always come from the Lord. Our victories always come from God. Look at verse 26. And Joshua adjured them at that time saying, Cursed be the men before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. They've just taken it. It's theirs. He said, He shall lay the foundation thereof and his firstborn and in his youngest uh, son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame was noised throughout all the country. God gives the victory if we'll obey him. God always, hear this tonight, delivers on his promises. And God had promised that he would give them the victory if they would obey him. He had promised to give Joshua the victory, but it was through his power, God's power. It was through God's strength and it was through God's might that they were able to do it. Who would have thought that all they would have to do is march around the city, blow the horns a few times and then on that last day, march a few more times around and as God's people obeyed God and really obeyed in the battle plan, the battle plan to overtake that city was to shout. And when Joshua gave that command to shout and Israel shouted, we see those walls fell flat. Imagine then what Jericho thought. I bet their mindset was very different now, wasn't it? A moment ago, Six days ago, they were thinking, these people have lost their mind. These people are crazy. If they're going to do this, they're never getting in here. Can you put yourself in that position when those walls fell? Can you even put yourself in the position, I believe, of Israel, of the soldiers that did it, of even Joshua? Man, it's those moments and you've probably been there in your own life where God has given you instruction, where God has given you a command and you obeyed and he delivered. And for some reason, we're surprised by the outcome. Has that ever happened to you? For some reason, we then go, wow, God really worked that out for me. And we're, we're shocked that God did exactly what he said he would do. Yet the victory comes from him. So what are we to do? Listen, simply tonight, our responsibility is to do what God tells us to do. That's what 
the task is for you and I. It's his job. It's the Lord's job to bring the results. It's his job to give the victory. It's, and that will come in his time in accordance to his plan. We just need to obey, trusting in him that he will give the victory. Keep in mind tonight, it's not about perfect planning. And this is coming from a planner. I like things planned out. I like things very detailed. I like things very orderly. This is just part of my temperament. It's part of who I am. But listen, as much as I can plan and as much as I can prepare, it doesn't hold a candle to what God can do, to what really his plan is for me. So it's not about us planning perfectly. It's not about us having all of the logical things in place. It's about trusting in the Lord and being obedient to him. You see, there are times we're going to have these tasks at hand. There are times we're going to have unsurmountable things that maybe be in our way. Folks, we can read Joshua chapter 6 and know that if we do it God's way, he'll bless. If we do it God's way, he will give us exactly what we need. So tonight, lead with this thought. As we face these obstacles in life, Remember these three things we've talked about this evening, that God's plans are always right. They don't need to be reasoned. They don't even need to be thought over. God's plans are always right. Secondly, we should then always obey them. We should never look for opportunity to go a different way or try to find a better plan. Let's just be a people that obey. And then lastly, as we desire to do and know those first two things, remember that our victories always come from God. They're not of our strength. They're not of our might. They're not of our wisdom. They're from God. And when we do that, we will never fail. When we do that, we will never go wrong. We do that, we will see Jericho fall before us every single time. All we have to do is follow the plan God has for us and trust in it each and every day. So tonight, what's your wall? What's, what's an obstacle that you maybe have in front of you tonight? I'm sure each of us are going through different things. Each of us are at different stages of life. Each of us handle things very differently, but often each of us have obstacles that we're trying to get over. Whether we're trying to climb over them or dig under them or plow right through them, I'd encourage you tonight, seek the Lord's direction. Seek how he's leading you. How does God want you to overcome that obstacle? Find his way to do it. Look for his direction. And then when he reveals that to you through his word, through the spirit as he speaks to you, obey, knowing he will give the victory over that obstacle tonight. Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful for a God that answers prayer. Lord, we are so thankful for a God that often has a better strategy than we ever would. Lord, we realize that in our strength and our might, Lord, we may often fail. God, tonight we desire to come before you, a holy God, an all-powerful God, a God that knows every plan we should make. God, I pray that as we've looked at these scriptures, that we would be a people to obey you, to seek your plan first and foremost. Lord, that we wouldn't try to reason around it. Lord, we wouldn't try to look for a better way, knowing that your way is always right. And God, just as you've shown us tonight, Lord, that as Israel was able to, able to overtake Jericho in a mighty way, it wasn't of their strength. It wasn't of their wisdom. It wasn't of their planning. It was of you. Lord, that's what we learn here tonight. 
And God, I pray that we would be a people, we would be a church, Lord, that always, always looks to be obedient to your plan. And Lord, that you would help us just in our own life. Remember that you will always give the victory as you promised if we're obedient to you. There's nothing in our lives that's unsurmountable with your help, with your will, with your direction. Lord, there may be some here tonight with some walls in front of them, with some hurdles. And Lord, maybe they don't know whether to go around them or over them or under them or even through them, and they need your direction. Lord, they need your plan. And I pray you'd show each one tonight exactly what you'd have for them. I pray, Lord, we would desire to be the people to obey you in all that we are. Lord, I pray you'd bless our invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed and eyes closed tonight, just quickly this evening, maybe God spoke into your heart. Maybe God showed you that. Maybe we just need to obey him. Not look for our own plan, not look for our own strategy, but seek the Lord's direction. And then maybe you're here and you just say, pray for me that I'd have the strength to obey. That I would know and I would see that we already have the victory if we just rely on him. If God spoke into your heart tonight, you'd just say, Pastor Fisher, pray for me. This message is spoken to my heart. The word of God has spoken to me about an area in my life. I'd just like you to pray for me. If that's you tonight, would you just slip your hand up nice and high? I'll give it just a moment as I look around. I'll pray for you. You want to obey. You want to serve. You want to do everything you can to obey his plan. We serve a great God. Let's go out doing everything we can to obey him, knowing he'll give that victory. Lord, bless the invitation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Dennis.